central to all teaching learning activity is clear and effective communication. Communication is the exchange and flow of information from one person or a group of persons to another person or group of persons. The system of communication has one or more sender and one or more receiver and one or more media of transmission or exchange of information. Successful communication is when the receivers understand information exactly as the sender intended to transmit or exchange. Education is all about communication and therefore, to be a good teacher one has to be a good communicator. Mehrabian has classified communication into three categories body language, tone of voice and the content of communication. Body language accounts for 55 percent, voice tone for 38 percent and the content of communication for 7 percent of communication. Communication in education can be improved by using appropriate media and they are also called as audio visual aids. One of the tools to identify the appropriate teaching learning medium is the Dale's cone of experience or the learning pyramid proposed by Edgar Dale in the 1960s. Dale's model describes the retention potential of various media. This model informs how much people can remember based on how they encounter the information. It also asserts that the progression of experience flows from the most concrete which is at the bottom of the cone to the most abstract which is at the top of the cone. As per the proposition in Dale's cone, we tend to remember 10 percent of what we read, 20 percent of what we hear, 30 percent of what we see, 50 percent of what we hear and see, 70 percent of what we say and write and 90 percent of what we do. This gives us an empiric measure of how to select effective medium for the content and context of learning. On these principles, effective media whether projected or non-projected can be designed. It has to be remembered that there are context specific applications for the projected and non-projected media such as in large and small groups and the individual learning methods. The use of social media in learning can also be explored as an additional activity. The good practice for preparing and delivering effective audio visual presentation is planning them well. The content in its sequencing, relevant images and background will be based on these three influencers. Another key factor to remember is that slides are not presentation. They assist the presentation by giving it a prop. It is claimed that average rate of speech is about 120 words per minute, while it is estimated that a person has capacity to listen and understand about 600 words per minute. A good presentation would attempt to minimize the noise and maximize actual learning focus. To facilitate this, a well designed slideshow presentation with its image, audio and video capabilities can capitalize on the notion that students do learn more deeply from words and pictures than from words alone. Selection of media has to be appropriate for the learning needs. It must also match the appropriateness of the teaching learning method that is being used. Teaching learning media can be broadly classified as mass based, group based and individual based. Mass based teaching learning media are expository in nature. These are teacher controlled where the teacher is imparting knowledge to the learners in a one way communication. The most commonly used media for mass based situations include radio broadcast, telecast using projection television and motion pictures. These can be supplemented by distribution of handouts, worksheets, posters etc. Group based teaching learning media are usually applied for small group situations which are more conducive for realizing objectives in higher cognitive, refining psychomotor and affective domains. These are also effective in achieving and refining objectives in interpersonal communication. The teaching learning media that are more appropriate for these situations include boards, charts, models, specimen, real objects and of course, 
the smart boards and simulators. Individual based teaching learning media are appropriate for personalized teaching learning situations. These provide opportunities to realize objectives that deal with intensive learning of psychomotor skills and lower cognitive objectives. These are mostly learner controlled in nature that is the learner can modulate their pace and volume of learning. The teaching learning media that are appropriate range from text based resources like workbooks, self learning materials and handouts to multimedia resources like e-learning modules, social media sources such as Facebook and YouTube and the emerging facilities such as virtual reality, augmented reality and simulators. Audio visual aids can be classified as computer assisted, projected and non-projected aids. Projected aids are those which utilize a source of lighting to project while the non-projected need no such illumination. The computer assisted include interactive learning resources, social media, augmented reality, virtual reality and simulators. Examples of projected aids include data projector, television, films, tabs, smartphone, wearable devices such as Google Glass. Example of non-projected aids 2D chalkboard, marker board, poster, charts and flip charts. The 3D aids include models, specimens, real objects. The printed aids include handouts, assignment sheets, self-learning materials and group task sheets. The Goldilocks principle is named after a children's story, The Three Bears, in which a little girl named Goldilocks tastes three different bowls of porridge, feels that one is too hot while the second is too cold and that the third is with the just right temperature and prefers to drink it. The concept of just the right amount has been applied to a wide range of disciplines including communications to show something that is middle of the road and generally acceptable without poking in extreme concerns. In the context of communication, Goldilocks principle describes the amount, type and detail of communication necessary in a system to optimize the effectiveness while reducing the redundancy without becoming too much to distract or too little to leave incomplete. Another framework that is followed is the CRAP principles which states that four key principles of visual design have an important impact on usability. Contrast, repetition, alignment and proximity. Contrast in visual design helps to direct the viewers eyes to what is important and helps them focus on what is the key message on the slide. Therefore, the key message has to be very different from the other items that surround it. Repetition represents consistency which affirms that the visual representation is more useful and easier to learn when a similar visual is presented in similar ways. The consistency can be ensured by way of using the same kind of fonts, icons, headings, links, list styles and slide layout. Alignment simply means making sure that all elements of the design line up horizontally and vertically. This can best be achieved by designing the interface to an underlying grid. Alignment is probably the most dramatic visual treatment you can do to a design to make it appear visually easier to use. Proximity principle is derived from the Gestalt school of psychology which emphasized that visual perception was about perceiving organized holes not just about seeing isolated objects. The principle of proximity means that if you place elements in a user interface near each other people will think that they are related somehow. In any communication, the purpose is to reach out to both the intellectual and emotional aspiration of the audience so that communication is interesting and at the same time enlightening. To ensure this in a slide or poster, the rule of thumb guidelines for designing slides or posters is to have one third text and two third visuals. The consistency principle suggests not using too many different fonts or font sizes two types of font seem to be optimal for the entire presentation. Every slide shall carry the same font and identical size so that there is not much of load on the eye and the mind to see and receive. Also colors must be used aesthetically 
without creating a color riot. It would also be aesthetic to allow sufficient open spaces either in slide or in posters. There shall not be much cluttering and cramming. The flow of visual and text sequence shall be managed for sequence of learning. Animation in PowerPoint are useful to control the eye flow. Remember to create multiple layouts before finalizing the most suitable one. Mm -hmm.